my unboxing, install, and setup on my new Metalla Pro 3 aerator coming up. Welcome to United Ranch. Enjoy the ride. So here's the Metalla, the Easy Air Pro 3, not the Plus. The 3 has the two diffusers. The, the Plus has the bigger, more heavier duty one, but it's just one. So got this, just cut this open. That, little parts for connectors for the hoses. Right. So these are two eight inch air hose diffusers, self-weighted producing medium-sized bubbles. Low back pressure diffuser gives maximum airflow from the air pump. They're like uh, soaker hoses, it's like. And then you also have the weighted tubing. There's the diffuser itself. And then it's like a 30 feet high quality, 3 8 weighted air hose. Will not kink or crush, it states. This is a Metalla 40 LP air pump, airflow up to 70 LPM or 2.5 CFM. Maximum water depth is 14 feet. Suggested water depth up to seven feet. This power cord, more connectors. Nice. And it uses only about 38 watts compared to my really energy efficient waterfall pump which is circulating the, the water instead of air. This is using a lot less electricity because you know you think of it, it makes sense. This is just circulating, producing that air, which is a lot lighter than the water compared to 360. I calculated my water pump from my waterfall. This is only 38 Watts. There we have it. It's rated for five to 16,000 gallon ponds. Mine's probably like 25,000, but this isn't my only aeration. I still have the bog filter, the 7,000 gallon per hour pump running cycling okay so let's go ahead and start with my setup I'll take you right up here to where the cord comes and the cord is right here it's in a GFI outlet right here and a timer so this is a cord right here going into this timer which is connected to the GFI outlet this timer I don't have running right now I have it at a, a position where it just is you know on all the time that is pretty much for when i have it in winter or fall or in the cooler months because right now i'm trying to get as much dissolved oxygen in the pond as i can and in the colder temperatures the water naturally holds more uh, oxygen but in the warmer temperatures it can hold less dissolved oxygen so it needs more of a, a boost of that oxygen in this pond and that's why I have these going. It's the heat of the summer right now. I'm just having my aerators go on 24 seven. But when it starts getting fall or winter, my plan is to turn these off only during the day. The day, the plants from the, the bog filter and the sides, and I got newly planted floating planters. Those actually, the byproduct of photosynthesis, they actually give oxygen during the day. But then the plants take oxygen, most of those at night. So that's when it needs an extra boost of oxygen. So even in the winter, fall, or in the cooler uh, months, I'll, I'm planning on turning this on only at night. So that's going right here. Then it goes to this cord. And this cord is roughly about six feet. And I got it going right here, down from the outlet, down here, underneath these rocks. They're pretty light and I just, I'm not smashing the cord obviously. And then it goes in the back of the aerator. The aerator is on a block of concrete, kind of like this one right here. It was just broken up concrete. I broke that up, got a chunk. You just don't want that aerator sitting in the mud and the water when it comes time for, for winter. You want that raised above the ground. And you also want to have the aerator sitting above the water level of your pond so it doesn't siphon when it turns off the water back to the air pump. You don't want that. So you want it higher. Or if you need it lower, just put a check valve on it. So got these connections, this piece connected there, connected to this tie-in piece right here and then this, and now I'm just working this. I'm gonna pad here with just some padding, just because it's concrete right here, maybe some of that rock, I'll pad it just in case. So then once I have the aerator set up, the cord there, I, I place this fake rock. I could put the link in the description, got off Amazon. Same with the timer, super cheap timer. They're so cheap, so easy to do, well worth it. Um, I got, I'll, I'll just put all these products in the description below. So this fake rock fits this aerator like perfectly. You need to protect the aerator from the weather elements. So you don't want rain getting on it. You don't want the sun burning down on that aerator. So you want to protect it. So that's why I have this fake rock. 
The main thing is you don't, the cover, you don't want it to suffocate the air pump. You want it to breathe. So I was gonna drill holes here on the sides, obviously not on the bottom because the rain get in. I was gonna drill holes on the sides, but I really didn't have to. I have this lifted enough, I have air gaps, and I just place these rocks, uh, you know, not fully just pounding all this line, this bottom edge of this fake rock with all these rocks. So a lot of airflow is going in between these, these rocks I have. And I have these rocks to kind of cover it to make it more of a, a natural feel. Um, and, I just have it more natural feel. So instead of, you know, you seeing, you know, just this line of the fake rock, you know, it's obvious. So just covering that up a little bit. So pretty much what I have is from that 30 foot roll of weighted air tubing, I pretty much cut it up in 10 foot sections. So the first 10 foot section is from the aerator. I got it running along underneath, obviously these rocks and I'm not crushing it, even though it's pretty stout tubing for sure. So it's running alongside the boat dock and underneath these rocks, and you could see it right here going down into the pond. So the first 10 foot section is going down and it's going to about the, uh, the middle of the pond where I wanted it. And then the next 10 foot sections, you got that T connector piece that it comes with. So you, from the aerator, you got that 10 foot, you put on that T connector, you got then the next 10 footer going over here and the following 10 footer over on this side. I, I like it like this because it, it spreads the, the air bubbles more around the pond instead of just having it right in the middle. The issue with this is there's more line, you know, tubing in the pond itself. And so when you're cleaning, you know, more tubing to go around to scoop up the waste, to scoop up the debris, uh, you know, instead of just right here, you know, you got those like, I don't know, 18 inch two pieces that you have, the weighted air tubing that you could just from this 10 foot from the aerator, connect those smaller tubings on both sides and then have the dis diffusers on both those. So it would just be right here. And I, maybe I'll do that in the winter before the, uh, the winter time. So it's just less in here. For me, it's not an issue. The, the other thing is when you're swimming, yeah, there's more lines in here. Again, not uh, a concern for me, but say if you're having a big party or a lot of people over, uh, you don't wanna keep on reminding them or, or that being annoying, you're playing volleyball or, or football in here. You know, you don't want that. So maybe you could turn it off, the, the aerators when the party and then make a little like connection right here or just a little piece of wood right here and you just hang those diffusers up here or somewhere maybe the wagon wheel or something like that. You could just hang those up temporarily. Okay, or another thing what you could do is with them on, I grab these both ends and I'm just gonna overhang this right here on this boat dock, this ramp. This is what I connect the boat with. And I'm just hanging this rope over. Then I got all this room to clean. I got all this room to clean with no weighted lines to go over. And if you wanted like the, the parties or whatever, you could swim without anything here because the rope's just looping over this and right here. This aerator with planting even more plants than just my, my bog filter up there. Planting all these plants uh, along this side, covering up this liner. Then I got those two floating plants as well that are getting established. All those plants, all of this dissolved oxygen, all the beneficial bacteria, all the areas that the beneficial bacteria can reside now. It is really robbing the algae uh, of, of those nutrients that the algae uses to thrive. Now these plants are thriving, even though they're they're young. And it's the water is getting a lot more clear. The single-celled uh, algae that creates that like kind of pea soup green color uh, to your to your pond that is is going away now. It's just a great combo. This aerator and plants. This all natural way. So I'm really I'm really really pleased. My main issue with this whole setup was that weighted tubing, it comes in a roll that's tightly bound, which obviously has to, to fit in the package. So understandable, not really much a way around that. But the outcome of that is it's so bound. So when you unravel it, it's not flat and straight. So what I ended up having to do when I ran this and those tubings, it just naturally wanted to bind up again because it was in that package. So I had to place large rocks, pretty heavy rocks, you know, from this 10 footer, these 10 footers, pretty much one rock each, or maybe a couple on these lines. And that's really my issue. Once they get established as, you know, level and they're not binding up because of the packaging, once they just lay flat over time, then it will be, you know, a cinch to 
clean under that, you know, with my, my leaf catcher and not having to worry about lifting up those rocks that are weighing it down. You know, especially come time in the summer, if I'm, if I'm scooping up debris under that line, which has a rock on it to hold that line down, if I scoop that rock off on accident, then it's not a big deal. I just jump in the pond and, and put the rock back on. But in the winter, I don't want to jump back in the pond to put the rock on it. So, but hopefully by the time winter comes, those lines will be flat. Again, they are weighted, so I'm not weighing them down, but they're binding up, they're curling up naturally because they are so wound uh, so tight in that packaging. But hopefully by winter, it doesn't matter if I have the rocks in there or not, and they could just lay flat and I could just scoop around it and it could shift, whatever. That doesn't matter at all. They're already straightening out really nice, the weighted tubing. And now I've taken out two of these rocks. I only have two rocks that are still in the pond weighing down the very ends. So right at that circular diffuser, right before it, right before that connection. So it's straightening out, it's doing well. If you want to learn more about dissolved oxygen and how that's so beneficial to your pond, I have a, another video I did before this one uh, called What You Should Know About Air Racing and Oxygenation uh, for Your Pond. It should be in my DIY Natural Swimming Pond playlist. And God's peace to you. And until next time, United Ranch out.